Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Goodman Games in the studio. My name is Stefan Pogue, and I'm here to just do a little drawing for you tonight. Um, the thing that I'm working on, as you're looking at me right here, is actually I'm redoing a uh, work of of um, that I did years ago for Goodman. So if you know Sailors of the Starless Sea, I'm redoing this image, which I'm not happy with the original. So I'm redoing it kind of in a new in a new way. Uh, we got kind of the castle in the background and we're gonna, I'm envisioning that maybe the print, the type can go up here, superimposed over this. I plan to do this maybe in some, some light shades of gray. And then down here you have these, uh, I believe they're called vine horrors. They're people who are infected with plant vines. Uh, and you have uh, a couple of our zero level um, characters here who are uh, confronting the vine horrors. So this is like, for me, this is step one where I do sort of a, a pencil layout of the drawing that I want to do. And then I'm going to go in with my different tools. And uh, this is, for me, the drawing is just sort of stage one, but it's it's there's less to see with the pencil drawing. So I decided I would start you guys off on stage two where I start inking, which is where it gets a little more serious because with stage one, I can always use uh, my different erasers. Um, people are always interested in what tools I use my favorite pencil is a 2H, um, and that's what I have here. Um, I also use a couple of different erasers, like this is a normal sort of eraser. And then this one is one I got recently. It's like a little tiny eraser um, that's like as, about as big as a thick pencil lead. And uh, I really love this thing. I just got it. I never had a, an eraser this tiny before. So this is pretty good. Um, but now I'm going to start with this little tiny brush and a bottle of ink. And um, I have my, my pencil drawing where I am actually fairly happy with it, but a lot of things are kind of undefined. Um, oh, this bottle of ink is empty. That's uh, problematic. All right, we'll try this one. Um, so I hope you all are doing okay. I'm doing all right. I, um, I had both of my COVID shots. The second one made me a little bit sick, but I'm feeling better now. Uh, and hopefully the rest of you are enjoying the spring. making yourself uh, happy this year. Um, what I've done here is I have the rough pencil and I usually like to start with a fairly small, this is like a, they call this a spotting brush. Um, and so I start, like to start with that and just sort of go in areas that I think I want darker, like shadows kind of things. And this is a different um, method than I used to use. Uh, I'm trying to sort of experiment with um, going in sort of in layers, using the brush to create shadows and highlight areas. I, obviously you create the highlights by where you choose not to draw and, uh, or I mean, paint with the ink. 
versus the shadows where you do draw. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's just, it's kind of a slow process, but um, I think, you know, so far I've been doing just a couple of minutes and you can really kind of start to see the difference. Um, I didn't used to use the brush in this way and uh, I started experimenting with it. And that so far, I'm really happy with it. I think I'm, I'm on to something. Um, You tell me what you think. Uh, okay, Million said, Très fantastique. Uh, thank you. I can't, um, can't see your messages, but Alana is reading them to me. So if I mispronounce your name, that's my fault. Uh, the paper that I'm using is called um, Bristol. It's what a lot of illustrators use, and it's kind of like the traditional um, for people who draw comic books. They use this. It's it's a, it's a very I like a um, one with a little bit of uh, texture on the surface, like a little bit of paper texture. So they sometimes call that um, vellum finish, but they also make it in a what's called a plate finish, which is a little smoother. I use them both, but usually I like the vellum finish a little better. Um, Bristol is like a good paper to draw on, but it's not, it's not that great for like um, washes, uh, but I continue to use it anyway because I'm just used to it. Um, sometimes I also use a kind of a water paper color, uh, water paper watercolor paper, I, 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 I've forgotten how to speak. And um, and that's also very nice, but uh, that one, um, when I use the pens, which I'll be using later, I don't find, I, I don't like the way they draw as well on the watercolor paper. So it's kind of, for me, it's kind of a six, six of one, half dozen of the other situation. Um, But if you if people were people sometimes ask me what kind of paper would I suggest that I that that like if you wanted to try some drawings I would start with uh, it's called Bristol and you can buy it you know in pads and stuff at at a place called like Michael's Art Supply Store um, I think it's a good paper to draw on um, but you know. Try out other things too. I sometimes just draw on, on um, you know, regular paper from your your copy paper. Um, and actually, I kind of sometimes really like that one too. But uh, Bristol is good because it it erases very well, um, which, as you can imagine, you end up doing a lot of that erasing. Um, as I said, I, I, I go in here and I, and I and I try to remember to stop every once in a while and just look at what I'm doing and and see if it makes sense. Like right now, I'm I'm liking the way this guy looks. Um, I'm kind of bringing in the shadows, like he's sort of lit, like the light is coming from behind and onto him. So we probably want to make some of these other areas a little darker because that'll just help give it shape.
Now, this is not really a drawing I have been asked to do. Um, I, I'm just kind of doing it because I want to, but um, I suppose if Goodman Games wants to use it in the future, I'll make it available to them. Um, part of what I've been doing in the past year as we've all been locked down in quarantine is that when I haven't had other projects to work on or when I need a break, I sometimes redo a drawing that I did years ago with what I've learned in the meantime. Um, so kind of like these creatures are people who are like completely wrapped in vines and the vines are making them attack. So they're dangerous plant people, I guess. Ask Carly about it. Now, just to uh, give you an idea of how my process works, I'm gonna put this aside. I'm not done with this brush, but I'm gonna put it aside for a second and bring out another one of my tools if I can find it. Um, which is this type of pen. This is like an old fashioned pen. Some people call it a, a quill pen or a illustrator's pen, I don't know. Um, but this is, has like a little metal tip uh, that is very flexible. And um, it's kind of a pain in the butt because you got to dip it every time you use it. Um, I also use pens like these. These are these Stadler pigment liners that a lot of people are using now. And I like these too, but I like this better because um, as you're going to be able to see, you can do like variations. Like if I press harder, it makes the line thicker. And then if I, you know, pull it more gently, it makes it thinner. So, so you just get sort of, um, you know, it's something that you kind of got to learn to do just by doing it, kind of practice, get a feel for it. Um, yeah, so these, these are, these are both the brushes and the pens and the Bristol. Those are all fairly uh, traditional materials. I, I don't think they've really changed much in the past hundred years or whatever, but it's not, for me, it's not like, you know, sticking with things because they're old. It's sticking with them because you can get the kind of marks you want. If you saw the lines that I just made, I'm really pretty happy with those. These little lines here, they, they're they just, that's what this pen does so well. Um, and so I do it in combination with the brush marks and it, it really is a lot of fun. Um, I'm probably going to use also some tone in this drawing. And if I do use it, my own experience is that I want to do it sooner rather than later. So I'm going to move some things around here and I'm going to show you guys if I can find my palette. I'm going to show you how I paint with tone, um, which is kind of the same thing as painting with the black ink, but it's in shades of gray. And uh, sometimes 
I use some of these colored inks and when I scan them, they come out gray. And sometimes I just use, um, sometimes I just use uh, uh, the uh, regular ink just diluted a little. And that's what I'm gonna do today. So I, that, what I put in there is just a little bit of water, a few drops of clean water. And then I take a little bit of ink out of my ink well and I put it in there and I'm gonna like test it to make sure it's kind of the color I want. And yeah, that's pretty good. So what I can do with this, is I can go in and sort of mix in areas of tone. I mean, in some ways, the way my style of drawing has changed, if you look, this is from about 10 years ago, it's all black and white. I'm just using line and, and marks. And what I'm doing now is I'm really thinking, trying to think of things more in terms of um, areas of light and shadow. Um, so these areas on the vine man that are in the shadow areas, I'm going to start to kind of try to build them up uh, with these different tones of gray. And then I can go over them on top of them with black ink. And then one of my other options is if I go further or if I make a mistake, I can try to go in with white ink, but the white ink, it, it will not save you if you really mess up. Um, I think it's, I've discovered that it's far better sometimes if you really mess up, it's a lot less work just to start over and, you know, Take the lesson uh, if, if you can't stand what you did. Or the other thing is maybe you figure out how to fix it. Um, but it's not like it's not like a digital art where you can just go back to an earlier state and uh, or delete a layer or something like that. I, I, I am not against digital work. I know a lot of uh, artists are stubborn about it, um, but I'm not really a digital artist. I use it, but I, it's not, it's not my thing. It's not my, it's not my, it's not where my talent is. Um, I think there's a lot of really good digital artists, but most of them are, um, most of them are working kind of differently than I do. And they are, um, they're really, you know, you gotta, you gotta work with your tools to understand it. So they, 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 they invest the time, they get better results. My, my digital art doesn't, it doesn't excite me that much because I guess I haven't learned how to do it right. Um, but hopefully you can start to see what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give, you know, this guy some shape and sort of like bring out these little shadow areas and everything and kind of make it more uh, gestural, I guess, like the gestures of him waving his viney arms around like, Yeah. All right, so I'm going to start moving in on some of these um, the peasants who I have here in the drawing. So you can kind of see how this works when I go in there with gray at first. So some of these areas aren't that well defined if you look in here, but it's kind of like, okay, when you think about things like how the knuckles turn, you want to see this is the top of the knuckle and then it goes straight down like that. And there's maybe a little shadow on the side of the knuckle there. Um, you know, so I want to try and get that in. Uh, 
I have this guy right here with this long ponytail, which I'm not, haven't quite decided how I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna leave that alone for now. Uh, and I'm gonna come in here and sort of try to define, since I determined that the sun is up over here coming from the upper right corner somewhere, um, I've got to make her sh shadows relate to that. Um, you know, so I, I um, one of my bad habits that I used to do is that I did not think enough ahead. And that's one of the habits I'm trying to cure myself of. Um, we, as we go forward. Um, so here I'm just starting to really uh, make just sort of some indications here. This guy's got this some sort of carpenter's ax, I guess, because he's a zero level peasant. Um, and he's waving that around because hopefully he's very frightened. Um, one of the things I enjoy very much about this work, uh, and I enjoy, have been enjoying more as I go forward, is I like to think about um, sort of the little things that are in these people's, these characters in their like sort of details of their clothing and stuff like that. I kind of try to get, try to always look at historical clothing and sort of other fantasy artist stuff. And I don't really want things, I don't really need things to look extraordinarily realistic, but I want them to look like, you know, like I don't want this ax to look useless. I want it to look like you could, you could cut wood with it, you know? Um, I don't want, I don't usually like dress people in um, bikinis and stuff like that, just because, you know, I don't think it would be comfortable to wear <laughs> uh, if you were just out walking around. I, I want them to be wearing clothes that look like you could be a functional member of society of a, a perhaps a, a, a less technological advanced society than we live in, but you know, it's it's not like a costume. It's like I hopefully it looks kind of like their normal clothes, but maybe they just have different rules for, you know, what's appropriate to wear. Uh, so sometimes I sneak in little little things for my own pleasure. On this one I have this eyeball in a pyramid on the back of his shirt, I don't know why. And then over here is this tattoo he has for Ein zur Zende Neubauten, uh, which is a German band from the 80s, 70s and 80s, I guess, that they, they, made, they made noise music. Um, so this guy is probably seriously into industrial noise music here. And he's out on his level zero adventure. Um, all right. Well, I just got a message from what, what was the name? Law, Laws of Enoch. Well, thank you. Um, uh, he, Laws of Enoch said he he liked the. I've been redoing some of my artwork uh, for the eighth printing, and he gave me some compliments about that. Thank you very much. Um, I do enjoy the old work. Uh, and some of it is kind of like, I want to redo it because sometimes I feel like I can do it better, but you know, 
the old books will always still be there. But thank you, that's, I like compliments. I'm not always uh, as gracious about them as I, as I would like to be. I'd like to learn how to take people's compliments well rather than being all aw shucks. Um, hopefully as you're watching this, you can kind of sort of get an idea of what is going on. The thing that I do is I try to remember to frequently stop and look at what I'm doing. Um, one of the criticisms I would put to my old work is that I don't think I took enough time with it. Um, there's a lot of things in there that I like, but sometimes I think I could have taken a little more time and ended up with something a little better, but you know, that's the artist's life, I guess. Uh, Enoch Seven asked me if I have plans for any work such as my Dagon book. For those of you who are listening, I, I did some comic books from sort of Appendix N, horror and fantasy stories. And I did Dagon and uh, Clark Ashton Smith. And I did some others too. I do, to answer your question, I do. Um, they, I just haven't done one this year. I, I had, normally I, did, I tried to do one before Gen Con, but we didn't have Gen Con this year. And Back last year, I lost some time because I had I had uh, COVID for a little while, um, and I didn't have it real bad. I mean, I wasn't in the hospital. I, I I was never on a ventilator, but it just it just I just slept a lot. So I kind of think that set me back a little bit. <laughs> like the little bit of time I was awake, I was doing paying work rather than you know, kind of a comic book, but I, I do want to get back into it. So thank you. Thanks for asking. Um, I've got a big wish list of things that I'm planning to do. So hopefully that's on one of them. Oh, okay. So Alana has asked how I got my start. And um, to be honest, I've always like enjoyed drawing uh, kind of fantasy stuff. And, and, and when I was a teenager, I thought I wanted to be a comic book artist, but I don't think I really wanted to be a comic book artist because I don't. I'm not really interested in like superheroes and where I was interested when I was younger. And then I just, I just stopped being that interested in that. Um, but I still really liked the, the style of drawing, I guess, in many of the comic books from the you know, the ones I grew up with. So it would be, you know, things from the 70s and 80s, mostly. Um, and, you know, so I guess that was sort of my inspiration. And I didn't really, I, I did other jobs and just drew for my own pleasure. Um, but uh, I then got in touch with publishers like Joe Goodman, uh, mostly through the, uh, once the internet had arrived, ironically, even though I'm older than the internet, it took the internet to sort of figure out that, oh, I could get in touch with this publisher 
and email him samples of my work. And if he likes them, he might hire me. Um, you know, so that's kind of how I got my, I guess my professional foot in the door. I had had practice by just drawing for my own pleasure and things like that. I did study art in school. I don't, I don't think the studies that I did in school helped me directly with becoming an illustrator because I didn't really study illustration, but they did help me a lot indirectly in terms of just sort of developing discipline. Um, and then there's, you know, if you go to art school, you end up taking a lot of classes in drawing and things like that. And, and I didn't do well in those classes, but I realize now some of the things like years later, some of the things that people were trying to teach me, I realize how valuable they are. So, so that's kind of where I came from, I think. That's one of the other artists that I admire a lot. Some of them are uh, people like Ian Miller, who used to do a lot of, he's done uh, some work for Goodman Games. He did work for the cover of the Empire of the East book, which is like absolutely fantastic, beautiful, sort of for me, the gold standard of what, um, fantasy art should look like. Uh, so yeah, you know, people like that got me very inspired. Uh, people whose work was like that. Gary Chalk, who used to do a lot of the fighting fantasy books. Uh, I really liked his work. I really like um, Russ Nicholson, who's, who's still working. Um, he does work for Goodman sometimes. So that's pretty cool that I get to see my work um, published in a book next to um, somebody whose work inspired me to want to do this in the first place. Um, let's see, so hopefully these guys are, are looking more like twisted plant people uh, or people covered in bits and pieces of vine and whatnot. Um, in the past, I used to work the surfaces of my drawings uh, very evenly, you know, so if I put little marks to indicate texture on this woman's dress, I would put them all over it. And one of the things I've, I'm starting to now is that, you know, we don't really look at things like that when we're out in the world. You, you kind of, you see like little patches of texture, but you don't you know, notice like every little stripe on somebody's pair of corduroy pants, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd go insane, I think, if you did. Um, but you just sort of notice that the pattern is there. So, you know, part of what I want to try to do is, is, is carry that, that idea forward, uh, try to remember it when I'm working. So this person has maybe lighter colored hair, um, maybe like light brown or blonde or something. So when I come in her, I'm going to do like the shadow side of her head and maybe a little in the eye there and under the chin. And then we'll come in later with some um, pen. And if I do this right, I won't 
do a lot up in here because that's like right where the sun is shining right on her top of her head. I won't do a lot up here because that would be catching the light too. Um, maybe some of the other things we can do are like, if I want this to look like um, sort of mist swirling around in the chasm back here. This is supposed to be, there's a moat back here, right? And so I'm imagining that a little bit of mist rising off the, out of the moat or ditch or whatever it is. And then that's the castle wall beyond it, which is, this is all going to be done Hopefully, if I play my cards right, um, sort of more vaguely than the rest, uh, so that I can, so that I can superimpose the type up there without it fighting too much. Mm -hmm. Wow, uh, you know, I uh, lecture text. Let's see if I can repeat the question. I have somebody reading the questions into my ear. Electro text, which that's a, I know that person, but I don't, it's somebody's email. Anyway, is that, is that James? I think it is. Anyway, uh, he, okay. He asked if I was into Dell or Ace sci fi covers. And I, the answer to that question is, I think so, but I don't know if I was aware of their, you know, that they were a particular brand. You know what I mean? Like, like I, if they had good art direction, I didn't notice that, you know, Dell, for example, had a particularly good art direction versus some other company that was producing, um, magazines or, or, or paperback books. I do remember really liking, there was a number of artists, like I remember when I was a, when I was a kid, uh, um, there was an artist called Daryl K. Sweet, who did a lot of book covers that you would, and he, I think he also did movie posters when they used to paint those. Um, he did the covers for, what were those books? The, the Stephen R. Donaldson books that people were reading in the 80s when I was a kid. I, I didn't think the books were very good, but the covers were great. <laughs> uh, Lord Fowl, that, that was the book. Does that mean anything to anyone? Lord Fowl? Okay, well, like I said, it wasn't that good. You don't have to look it up. I mean, maybe other people like it. If you do, uh, then ignore me, but I didn't think it was, it was kind of like, uh, it was kind of like Tolkien, but without elves. <laughs> Lord, Lord Fowl's Bane, that's it. Yeah, it was, it was kind of like, Kind of like Tolkien, but it's better than, um, I'll tell you the one that I thought was terrible. Uh, the fantasy stories that was terrible, that had good art was, um, what is it called? The Shannara stories. Anyone ever read those? 
Who boy, those are. I'm sorry. They're just. They're just, you know, they're not even pretending that it's something other than, you know, this is just like if you didn't get enough in the Lord of the Rings, then you can read this and we'll write the same book again, but with different names. And we won't call them wizards, we'll call them druids. There, it's different, you know, and you're just kind of like, oh, wow. That's just. Terry Brooks, Does, has he written anything else? Does anyone know anything? I, is, it, is somebody like making that into a, a um, did I hear that somebody was gonna make that into like a movie or a TV show? Now would be the time. Now would be the time now that um, Game of Thrones is, you know, kind of done. And, Uh, okay, Enix7 has asked me if I have a particular DCC piece that I am fond of. And um, I really like, okay, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to show you something that hasn't even been published yet. And I think this one's pretty good. Uh, this is this is my favorite thing that I've done so far, and um, I have I have two of them that I'm going to show you. Um, this one is kind of a Dagon picture, and it's way more complicated than it needs to be, but I'm pretty happy with this one. Um, and this is going to be in an upcoming reprint of the, um, hopefully it'll be in an upcoming, Joe hasn't seen this yet, so I don't know, uh, in an upcoming reprint of the original rule book. But the middle of it, you're not going to see any of this. So you guys are seeing it now, but when they print it, all of this is going to be covered with text. So I just did that for the fun of it. Um, Maybe Joe will use it somewhere else, I don't know. And then there's this one, which is for the same thing, but this is like, get that in there, right? This is like hobbits, um, or I guess we have to call them halflings. Uh, and the part that you see here that's blue, that's the part that will be covered up by text. So all you're gonna get is the brown part, but it'll be printed in grayscale, it won't be printed in color. So I, I'm pretty happy with both of these. Um, as far as published things go, you know, um, I really liked a lot of the work that we did, um, that all of the artists, myself included, did for the, um, the um, Mutant Crawl Classics, the sci-fi game that Joe published. Um, I think we really did a good job on that book. And I think we really did a good job on the uh, Lankmar stuff. I was really happy with a lot of the Lankmar stuff. So I hope that answers your, your question. Was that from Enoch 7? Okay, there. A lot of Enochs out tonight. And that one of the things that's, I mean, kind of good about this method that I'm using is that you actually, it's actually in terms of if you're a, if you're a capitalist and you have to worry about making money, it is also kind of an efficient way. Now you can see right now that compared to where we were before, I wish I had, you know, thought to take a picture of it before, that we're really getting a good sense of 
um, sort of the 3D aspect of these characters. This guy here, I'm going to try to hopefully make him more in front because he's we're actually he's got his back turned to us. And uh, my new obsession, this guy here, you can see he's got like a giant mustache. If you're on the internet right now, then um, look up uh, who is the guy whose mustache I was looking at. Um, Friedrich Engels, you know, the guy who um, helped Marx write all that stuff about capitalism and Marxism. If you look up Friedrich Engels, he has the most amazing mustache. It like it's like a beard mustache. It's huge. It's just hanging down his face. So those are my new thing for for fantasy art. I'm giving a lot of people the Friedrich Engels mustache. I figure that'd be be a nice fashion statement for medieval fantasy. Um, yeah, so I'm going to work on this top part up here while I've got the gray ink going. And uh, I mentioned before that I also sometimes use um, white ink, um, but it White ink never quite works the way you think it should. Like you, you, you buy it and you think, oh, I'm, you know, I can take this black ink and I put it over the paper and it turns the paper absolutely black. So I should be able to take this white ink and put it over the black ink and make it absolutely white. But and you can a little bit, but it, sometimes it just doesn't stick. It's weird. It it. Like I think the the different inks, some of them kind of repel it. You know, they they have sort of a greasy quality to them. So um, you kind of got to learn to live with that. But it also it kind of it gives it sort of a paint effect that I actually really like. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to get to it on this one, but hopefully I can show you what that's like. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get to it on this one tonight, but maybe in the future. Um, yeah, so we kind of want to just do this stuff real lightly. And one of the nice things about working with um, the brush with paint is that, I don't know if you can see that, but I, if it's like a little too dark, I can just go over it with the brush again, if the brush is a little dry and it actually picks up some of the paint and takes it away. So I can control how much, how dark. Um, this is just watered down ink, but it works really nicely for that. Um, I should caution you, that I, this is not a good, this watered down ink method is not, if you, if you like what, want like a real even tone of gray, this is not a good way to get it because it'll have like little brush marks and water marks in it, um, which for me is okay. That's part of my aesthetic, but um, it's one of the things that uh, digital work can do very well, you know, and the, um, if you're not working digital, it's, it's a little harder to achieve. Uh, but 
I guess that's part of the trade-off. I do, I do, and I give them um, little stories. How? Oh, I'm being reminded that I'm I'm not ask I'm not telling you the question. Yes, yes, I've been asked for my for my NPCs, uh, the, the 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 people in the in the drawings and the paintings. Um, Alana asked me, do they ever have names? Do they have identities and the answer to that is yeah they I used to um, uh, there was like a, a, if you know Doug Kovacs has like this group of characters that he uses consistently and so I used to kind of want to do that um, but I never really got sort of my group of characters off the ground so sometimes I think about doing that more and Sometimes not, but like, you know, like this, this little person here um, looks like, to me, she looks like somebody I knew in college. I was kind of thinking about that when I, when I drew her, um, you know, with kind of this goofy, messy hair and, <laughs> uh, and like, um, you know, like the people I talked about with the different clothing and, and stuff like that. I, I, I kind of like to imagine them having sort of their own little lives. I, I don't know if I, other than a, a couple of them, I gave names, but I haven't used those characters consistently. So I don't know if it helps that, that I gave them names because I didn't kind of forgot about them. But if they come back, I had one, uh, one um, character whose name was uh, Roger, and there's no particular reason why his name is Roger. Uh, and then there's another guy named, um, a woman named, what was it, Camilla or something? I don't remember. So I guess I, I should look that up because I wrote it down somewhere. So the answer to you is yes, sort of. Yes, sort of. I do sort of have names for people and stuff like that. You know, a lot of it is just like you spend a lot of time just by yourself. So you kind of make things up to amuse yourself. Right. Oh, OK. Um, uh, we have five minutes, I'm told, and then this will be over. So, anyone, anyone got any, any, any questions? Am I, am I still on camera? There you go. Okay. So, um, again, these are the tools that I've been using today: ink wash with the little tiny brush, and this is a cheap very cheap brush that I don't remember where I bought it, but the name on it is Arteza. Um, and it, it actually, it works, it works really well. It, it, it is actually just a nylon brush, which kind of surprises me because usually they don't work well um, with this kind of work, but this one does. So I use that, it's like a tiny one. It's called a spotting brush, which you can, you can buy those anywhere. I also use this pen here. This is one of my favorite tools. Uh, and this is a speedball number 12 tip. And it's just all of this stuff you can buy at any art store. You don't have to go to a fancy store. It can just be like, you know, Michael's. That's that all that stuff is perfectly good. Um, and then I use um the paper i use most often is called bristol um and uh that's 
That's it. That's all I got. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just uh, draw a little more. And I guess eventually the, the show will be over and it'll turn off. But thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for the questions. I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, and I hope to see you at the next one. I'm going to try to figure out something different to do on this. Maybe next time I'll do the pencil. Um, maybe next time we can do like requests. Like somebody can say, you know, can you show me how to, how you would draw this? Uh, and I will either succeed or fail uh, when camera there. And you guys can vote if I did a good job or not, drawing whatever you want of. As long as it's not a horse. The horse horses are really hard. Um, it takes a lot of preparation for me to draw even a, a an unconvincing horse, which, which, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. This is kind of how I, how I build it up. And I can go in there with the, with the brush, and kind of, Okay, he's got some shadows there running along his back. A little thing behind the ears. Okay, we one more question from Electrotex. Um, well, you know, I kind of fell off the. Uh, I fell off the radar uh, for that. Um, I suppose I, if if I do, I better. I guess I better get on the stick, right? Yeah. To answer your question, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do that. I, I guess later tonight I'll I'll, I'll 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 find out if I've missed the boat yet. But yes, yeah, so I want to do that. I think I, I, I missed it last year. All right, guys. Okay, well, I hope you all have a good night. Um, we're going to be just fading out here. So.